a look down inside the Yisbao cylinder. I don't know how well you can see, but a lot of those ports are chamfered real nice. This is a uh, dual port. It's got one large port on either side. The uh, Pinkway had a uh, smaller transfer port in the towards the exhaust side and a larger, I believe it was the exhaust side, and a larger port towards the uh, intake side and the little fin sticking out in the middle. This one just has one large port on either side. Looks like there's plenty of oil down in the bottom. I don't think it's tuned too awfully lean. Overall, it doesn't look too bad. A little bit of polished and scoring in there, but nothing horrible. And if anybody wants to look inside the case of this is bow. Not sure what you can see down in there. Grab a flashlight here. Definitely not that one. How about this one? This one might be able to see down in there a little bit. Looks like they've machine the top of that crank a little bit doesn't look awful and there's the, the piston see if I can turn it so you can see the ports in the side maybe as I dump gas all over the bench because the tank still has a little bit left in it so here's the piston out of that pink way I'm just cleaning up the, the ports here I don't know if you'll be able to see I've cleaned it up a little bit. If you look over on this side, right down in here, there's a lip. It's just kind of polishing that lip off, cleaning them up. I'm not opening them up much. Uh, I don't want to end up destroying the piston. If you look down in there, you should be able to see that sticking out pretty good. And then on this side, I've kind of flattened and smoothed a little bit. And that's Pretty much all I'm going to do with the piston, just kind of smooth the flow out going in there. I don't know how interested anybody might be in this, but I figured since I'm tearing this apart, I might as well record it and maybe it'll help somebody. So I've already got the carburetor off. That's, you know, you pull the top cover, five bolts, uh, and there's two screws that go in, hold the carburetor on, pull your impulse line, your fuel line off, your uh, throttle linkage, and... I already have the uh, choke cable off. So first thing we want to do is this little metal ring down in here we don't want to lose. And there's two screws holding on the intake adapter, I guess we'll call it, cover. The uh, actual intake boot is inside this. Get my fat fingers down in there. Oh, come on. There we go. And there's another screw way down in here. So I will have to find my flashlight with a magnet on it. Let's see if I can get it out with a magnet. Here we go. Now we'll see if we can push our impulse line through. And you see this rubber boot down in here it comes in and through this plastic piece. We gotta kind of be careful and we don't want to rip this. Kind of fold it down hopefully you can see with my fingers not in the way kind of roll it and fold it in as we pull this plate out and there's a little plastic piece and this has the little cardboard piece here and then we have this inner plastic 
heat barrier or shield or whatever you want to call it. And be careful for your throttle linkage and pull through your impulse line. And if you notice, I'm laying everything down how it come off so I can just pick it back up and put it back on. Uh, I'm not going to take the intake boot off. I don't think I need to. And this is a, I believe this is a three millimeter T handle. There's four oh, hex head screws down in here. And they appear to be sealed. I don't know if it's Loctite or what kind of sealant they're using. And hopefully I don't have to take this handle off. On the pink way, for some reason the handle is in the way and I had to uh, take it off. But this one looks like it might be far enough forward, I don't have to worry about it. And I leave the oh, bolt heads, or the, excuse me, the bolts in the cylinder head until I take it off. And then I'll just dump the bolts out that way. Hopefully I don't lose one down inside somewhere. Yeah, these ones are definitely tight. Some saws, these cheap Chinese saws, they don't get put together very tight. And a lot of people take them all apart when they first get them brand new and lock tight all the important screws and bolts. But these uh, are definitely in there. This one looks like it has a gasket and it probably also has I think it's moto seal, but some version thereof to seal the gasket to the cylinder. Yeah, oh, I guess it is going to come off. I got a rubber mallet over here I had to use to get it off the yiz bow. And the gasket's going to tear, but that's fine. I probably are gonna, I'm probably going to take it off anyways. And we just dump our screws out. Now the Yizbo had flat washers and lock washers under the heads of these screws where neither the Pinkway nor this Weimars have them. And we'll take a look down in our cylinder. <laughs> you can see some of that. I guess it's sealant down in there. That'd be good to get chewed up in there. But this is just like the uh, pinkway saw so it's got two separate transfers it's got a smaller I think that might be is that the primary in the front the primary transfer here in the front the secondary transfer which is larger towards the exhaust and I'm gonna see let's see if we can get in there let me uh pause you for a minute. I'm going to clean this up and get the flashlight and we're going to take a gander at that hole down in the cylinder. Well I've got that all cleaned up. I'm not sure you can be able to see down in there enough. Yeah you can definitely see that. I don't think it's going to show up on camera. Right down in there there's a that hole. And it's definitely a hole if you look down in there. You can see it right off my yeah, that's definitely a hole in the the plating. So I'm gonna clean this gas material up. I've actually 3D printed a uh, a sanding block if you will. It, uh, just cut some sandpaper put down in here and then you can just spin it a little bit just to clean it up I mean you can take a few thousands off but you're not machining it but and then uh, I'll get the gasket off here and clean up all this sh schmutz that's down in there and get it put back together and see what the squish is I didn't check this one before I tore it apart uh, the pink wave was 45 thousandths to start with, and the Yezbo 
was 53 thousandths to start with. I uh, managed to get the pink wave down to 30 and the Isbob down to 28. I didn't want to go a whole lot farther just because with these soft starts, I don't know how much they can handle. and I'm not sure I want to get into the headache of changing out the soft start for a standard direct start recoil. I just got the gasket tore off and I don't know if you can see in there how much of this uh, silicone sealant they have down in here. Just, I mean it's down in here. I already cleaned this off. But you can see it's all down in the cylinder. These feed ramps for the transfer ports. A lot of sealing in there. They definitely didn't want that leaking. If you remember, there's a C-clip missing right here that allowed this washer and this rubber, rubber bushing to fall off sometime in shipping. So I bought me a little kit of E-clips. Well, we can see if we can find one that fits. I wonder what this one will do. I get it in front of the camera so you can see. That might fit in there. Well, let's see if I can send this flying across the garage. Oh, didn't go flying across the garage, but certainly didn't go in the groove. So it may be a little too small. Oh, there it goes. Stretched it up. Well, let's see. This side's going to be too big. Well, maybe it won't be. Well, yeah, that's too big. Well, Oh, that went on there better. There, there's that. And a little rubber bushing. And that's good. But I also wanted to show... So I found these kits. I don't know if you can read that. I don't even know if that's the right part number. This is a different one. So this has the chain adjuster on the front. So I bought a couple of these kits to see if they would fit these clone saws, copy saws, I guess I shouldn't call them clones, they're definitely not a one-to-one -one clone, they're imitation or a copy. But anyways, I, uh, there it is, so this If we unscrew this all the way out, uh, let's see. We gotta pull this out first. Now we've got to unscrew. Holy cow! I can't hold onto a screwdriver. So we'll spend an hour unscrewing this thing out. up our fancy little kit here. If I can get my fingers to work. So there's the card that's inside if you can read that. I'll try to remember to put some links in the description down below to these. So if anybody has an extreme dislike for the style of 
exchange sensor that came with it. Clean some of that out of there. So this just goes down in here like so. And then this goes down in here like so. And we just put this cover back on. And it should work just fine. Hard to do this while holding it up in the air for the camera. Well, let me get it started first. There we go. Now maybe you can see what I'm doing. Although, if you can't figure out what I'm doing, you probably shouldn't be doing this anyways. That's going to work okay. It doesn't look exactly the straightest in there, but we'll give it a little pre lube with some barn chain oil and a little down in that gear. Grab our scrunch. And we'll put some down in here too. We'll lube everything up. Seems to be working. I don't know how long it'll last, but but that'll make it a little nicer putting the or tightening the chain back up. And we'll save the parts from the old tensioner. Throw it in the box. Okay, well here's the muffler off the Wii Mars. You can see the the single hole down in the center is factory, and I just went through and just punching a couple extra holes all the way around just to get a little more flow out through there. I think these two ports are probably large enough. It was just, and there's a hole and there and there, but I didn't have a step bed I could get in there to open that hole up without hitting this. And I didn't feel like prying back this pinch weld all the way around and actually pulling it apart and pulling the baffle out of the inside so I just filled a few holes through it. Now I got all three saws tore apart, removed the base gaskets and got the squish down to about 30 thousandths on all three. Uh, they've had a couple days for the sealant to cure between the cylinder and the case. It's about 30 degrees out this morning so we'll give them a cold start and see how they run after being torn apart.
our three saws all warmed up and tuned up this morning. Uh, had to lead them out just a little bit, but they're, I think they're ready to run. I'm going to take a test cut with each one just to get a rough comparison to what they're cutting through this test maple before. It won't be exact because I've cut quite a bit off from it, but it'll be close. <laughs> gaskets increase the speed of cut a little bit give them a little bit more power if you look each one gain you know 10 15 percent and then if you look at the 460 speeds I don't know if it's because it was colder or if the log is actually harder or what but it, uh, the 460 took longer to cut this time than last time so you factor that in could be up to 30 percent horsepower increase just from deleting the base gasket and modifying the muffler so I'm I'm happy uh, this will probably be the last in this series of videos I'm not sure what's in store for these saws moving forward uh, if anybody has any ideas feel free to leave them in the comments down below uh, if anybody has a line on a uh, micro turbocharger might be interesting well that's it for now thanks for watching